What's up guys, it's Brandon Flash. Today you're joining me in Charlotte, North Carolina at a Coulomb charging station. It's a 12 stall under solar canopy up to 360 kilowatts and I'm going to give you guys a full tour. So we're at a Coulomb charging station. We're right off of uh, Interstate 485 that goes around Charlotte. We're in kind of the southwest-ish area of Charlotte, North Carolina. And this is a brand new site. It's not yet commissioned or powered on yet, but I wanted to give you guys a full tour because it's a pretty cool looking site. I'm curious to see how it performs. Um, and I'm gonna definitely be keeping my eyes on this one. So here's the site. That's a discount tire there. There's a Circle K there. That is South Tryon Street, if you're familiar with Charlotte. And then right over here is actually Interstate 485. So that is the loop road all the way around Charlotte. Um, that way, if you're getting anywhere, um, it's also right near where 485 and 77 meet. So pretty good location here. Uh, it's a little awkward to get to off of 485. You have to kind of go around the Circle K and stuff. There's not really a super direct way. It's kind of almost in like the DOT right of way almost. I'm curious how they got this site. Um, which makes it really kind of awkward to get to right off the interstate, but it, that is what it is. We'll see how that works out. Um, here we have the site. We have a solar canopy, which I know everyone seems to love. Um, it does add a lot of complexity to the site, which I'll show you in just a moment. Uh, and this is from an operator called Coulomb. They're actually owned by a local solar company. I'll have to look up the name of that solar company. I'm blanking on it off the top of my head. Um, that has recently gotten into charging a bit. So interesting that they've done this. I visited one of their other sites quite a while ago in Matthews, North Carolina, uh, and they seem to be having some sites pop up here and there. Overall, it's a pretty decent site. So let's start here. We've got this solar canopy. It's probably roughly 75 to 100 kilowatts of solar capacity. And for being an awkward site to get to, there's a lot of people just driving through here in loops. Very strange. Uh, they had like a big smile on their face. Very weird. Anyway, um, we've got the solar inverter up there. So that's where all the solar comes together. Um, all the DC legs from the panels themselves. And then that's where it gets rectified to 480 volt three phase. And then into that conduit and over there, we'll get over there in just a moment. And here we have the Zerova dispenser. So each one of these has one liquid cooled Huber and Sooner uh, cable and then one Amphenol 300 amp cable. So pretty interesting choice of hardware here, or at least hardware configuration. I'm not sure if these dispensers can actually support having two liquid cooled cables, but I'm very curious how this will end up working out in the practice for uh, users being able to select the correct uh, connector <clears throat> for their vehicle type and whether that will impact for performance because for example if you have an f-150 lightning you'll want the liquid cooled cable if you have an ev6 it doesn't really matter but you'll actually get a little bit better on the huber and sooner liquid cooled cable so i'm curious how they'll communicate if they'll have different power ratings that they'll communicate on those cables because to most people they're just going to grab whatever cable is available but i do think it's nice that they have them facing opposite directions so you essentially have liquid cool that way and a liquid cool this way because of, of this unit so I don't think this site is going to be full full that often. So I think in general, you'll probably have one car on this side, one car on this side, and then repeat across the site. So it's generally won't be an issue, I think. However, one thing I am noticing that could be an issue is that if this site is full and you're trying to pull around and turn around in here, which is a nice turnaround area, but it's a bit narrow on both sides if people are not close. So it's gonna be hard to be able to then get out without having to back up, or if they're double stacked, it gets even messier. So I think they should have made one side, either that side or this side, a bit wider. Obviously they have some constraints here uh, to allow for more of a drive path or intended and marked drive path, rather than just having it basically the six cars wide uh, and hoping for the best. So all of these dispensers are the same. There are six of them. Uh, these will be operated on the EV Connect network and they have Pater payment terminals on them. This one does not have a payment terminal on it. So you can actually see some of the electronics inside of it. Interesting that the payment terminal is just missing. Uh, and then we also have an actual vacuum that's a paid vacuum. 
It's $2 apparently for five minutes, which seems a bit pricey, but I don't think I've ever actually paid for a vacuum use. So I don't know if that's just normal. Uh, it's missing the uh, like suction handle thing. So hopefully they get that on there. This one is also missing the payment terminal, but has it duct taped. That one has a payment terminal. And this one has a payment terminal as well. And those are the Pater Apollo Polars. So those are gonna be fairly common in the US. Uh, interestingly, this top hat thing seems to basically only be for the cable management. And this, these cables are very stiff and they have this loop in them. It, it's an interesting setup because you have a loop on the this side, but I think in reality, this is just gonna be kind of messy or it's going to leave a lot of marks on the side of the charger so not ideal in that regard let's head over to the equipment so feeding these six dispensers is actually three charging cabinets so each one of these is 360 kilowatts i'll show you the data label there you go so you can see max uh, or output is max 500 amps, one to four, and then 360 kilowatts there. And they're taking three phase with neutral and with uh, ground, of course. Uh, and then they're Intertech to UL2202. They were made over a year ago, so definitely a bit older, interesting. Also interesting to have the emergency stop so obvious on the cabinets i think they should have some sort of protective cover on them but not my site uh each one of these has a cellular antenna on top so they each have a sim card i assume and all three of these are exactly the same coming back here we have the ac distribution board so even though we have 1800 amps of connected electrical capacity they only spec a 1200 amp panel board or switchboard so they must be using some sort of site control load management. Otherwise this would not work or the site would definitely not have full capacity. Um, and then connected to the panel board, you have some sort of probably communication cabinet. Here you have an e-gauge. So I am assuming that this is some sort of uh, site meter or load management. This is a mini power zone, MPZ. And this is actually a step down from the 480 to 240, 120 and you have some of the auxiliary loads on the site powered by this. You have a GFCI outlet right here for technicians or whatever. You have lights. I don't know what DAS is. Um, maybe surveillance. I don't know. Uh, and then the vacuum. So that's powered there. And you have the photovoltaic disconnect. So 100 amps. So that's 80 something kilowatts. Uh, and then that's where the solar will come in here and then get fed back into the system. You also have a little bit of a trough here. You have a um, light sensor there for the lights, most likely. And then on this side, most likely some metering equipment or something. Um, it could also just be the controls for the cabinets uh, and the dispensers. And then coming over here, we have a transformer on site. It's a 1500 KVA. Uh, there's no meter yet, which indicates to me that this is not yet powered. Um, so looks like they're awaiting Duke to hook up the power, uh, and then actually turn on the site. Also kind of cool. They have a solar panel up there with a camera on it. So that way, even if the site is out of, uh, electricity, they could still see the site potentially if cellular works, uh, and see what's going on. But overall, I'd say this is a pretty nice site. Uh, if you're in the area and you need charging, I think this will be pretty popular for Uber and Lyft drivers if it's priced reasonably. Um, and those visiting Charlotte, I think, will use this as well. So hope to see more sites of this layout. I like how it's done. Um, and this is basically what EV drivers have been wanting for a while. So uh, hopefully the hardware works. Hopefully it stands the test of time and Coulomb stays operating. Anyway, hopefully you guys enjoyed this video. If you did, hit the like button, hit the subscribe button, comment your th thoughts down below. I'll see you guys on the next one. Thank you guys for watching.